I think the first thing that we do when we look at a kid uh, is that we don't try to figure out what their potential is. That we just drive it forward, that we're going to maximize whatever potential they have. Uh, so often um, we'll get kids in, you know, as babies or as uh, even older children, where the first thing that mom tells us is, we were told this child would never walk, you know, as a newborn. Uh, and I, that, that to me is very troubling. I've had several kids that even I secretly thought, I don't know what this kid's going to be able to do. Uh, and a few do years down the road, they are walking or they are really performing way beyond what I thought they would do. Um, and I think that uh, my hand partners, uh, Dr. Scott Cozen and Dr. Z uh, Dan Zlotlow, are also frequently um, surprised by what somebody achieves. Um, and that's the great thing about kids with arthrogryposis. They learn how to adapt and they learn how to really push forward. And so my goal, uh, my role in this is giving them uh, the best opportunity to maximize what they have. Uh, so my philosophy is that we, uh, as a lower extremity specialist, that I push them forward as far as I can so they can sit well, so they can stand, possibly walk, hopefully walk. Um, and with that, what we do is uh, the first thing that we usually approach are the feet, get the feet in a good position. A newborn baby is nice and flexible, so we can massage those feet with casting, get them in a good position. Uh, the club feet, uh, usually the only thing we have to do for them uh, is after we've gotten their feet casted out, is we have to do a little office procedure. We have to nick the Achilles tendon, and we can do that right in the office. Um, so we don't have to do any anesthesia. The kids with kind of the the opposite of the club foot, something called a congenital vertical talus, uh, where instead of the foot turning inwards, the foot's turning way outwards, uh, those we can also cast down. Uh, and they need a, a smaller operation in the operating room, uh, but it still beats by several miles the old procedure of opening up the whole foot and trying to get everything back in the right place. Um, and then about a year or so of age, then we look at uh, carefully at the hips. If the hips are dislocated, then is the time that I try to put the hips back in place. Um, there's a, a perception uh, in the orthopedic community that hips in children with arthrogryposis should be left dislocated if they are dislocated. Uh, but I, I look to Dr. Lynn Staley, the one who wrote the, uh, the Atlas in Arthrogryposis. Uh, he's out in Seattle. He published a number of papers showing that you can have very good results putting the hips back in place on children with arthrogryposis. And I started following that lead, and I've been very happy to have done that, because uh, I think it really benefits our kids. Um, if the child has the hips in place, but they have uh, contractures, the typical arthrogryposis contractures are the knees are kind of pointing out to the side, then we want to get those knees so they're pointing forward, and that we get the best position for how well they can bend up and extend those hips. Uh, and the best way I find to do that is um, making a, a cut through the top of the hip bone and lining things up so that we leave the hips where they want to be because we can't really change that position, but we can at least change the position where the knee is in relationship to the rest of the body. And once you've done that, now we have a better chance at first of all getting the child to sit comfortably uh, and hopefully get them to kneel and hopefully walk. And then about four years of age, we start looking more at the knees. Most of the kids with arthrogryposis, if their knees are involved, they have a flexion contraction, meaning they can't straighten out the knee. Uh, so at about four years of age, that's a good time to see what we can do about straightening out those knees. Uh, and there's a few different ways we can do that. Some are pretty simple, some are not so simple. Um, now there is the opposite. You have some kids who are born with their knees stuck straight, and with those kids, when we start addressing the foot, we'll also try to cast the knee and try to bring that down and help to bend that. So for me, uh, fun and rewarding are the first two things to come to mind. Um, I really uh, enjoy working with these kids. Um, you know, oftentimes you have a, a Friday where we do a lot of our casting and, uh, and the kids are not happy to get cast and they're pretty vocal about it. And so it can be uh, a little nerve wracking by the end of the day. But then you get that child who two years ago uh, was a fire alarm going off when you went into the room and now suddenly they want to give you a hug or they want to show you what they can do now. They can get up on their knees or uh, with their braces on, they can take a few steps. Um, and that all just kind of brings it back home to you. Um, Pardon me. 
Um, the great thing about kids with arthritis is they're very adaptable, uh, and they really learn how to do things on their own. Uh, and sometimes they come up with ways of doing things that you know you wouldn't think of. And so they're teaching us something all the time. Um, and that's what, for me, makes it so rewarding. Bringing it more close to home, th the main thing that I need to do uh, is find a way that I can um, collect data on my patients. Uh, it makes it sound a little clinical, and I didn't mean it quite that way, but uh, right now I just have uh, a network of patients I've treated, and I uh, a little bit uh, cramped for time, so I have been able to bring it all together and say, ah, this is what we did for the kids with the dislocated hips. This is what they looked like two years later. This is what we did with the kids with hip contractures. This is what they look like two years later. And get that information out there. So that, you know, my colleague in San Francisco or in Omaha, Nebraska can see that in a journal and go, hey, never thought of that before. This is a different way. Let's start doing it this way. Um, and that's what I, I need to, that's my responsibility. And I need to really get to work on that and get that information out there. Um, and hopefully over time, we will develop more of a community of pediatric orthopedists who are treating kids with arthrogryposis uh, and have a way to meet. Um, the last meeting that I went to that was rather specifically based around that, uh, actually we had one here uh, a year and a half ago in Philadelphia when we had the, uh, the convention here. Uh, but before that, the, the bigger meeting was the one that was in, uh, in England. Uh, and that brought people from an international perspective. And it'd be great to be able to do that again and do that stateside and bring more of my uh, US colleagues there as well. So there's certainly uh, a, a real need out in the community to get more information about arthrogryposis. Because um, just like we were saying here, so many of the families that we see, uh, the pediatrician didn't know what was going on um, or wasn't quite clear what was happening. Uh, and it's a very uncomfortable position to be in uh, as a caregiver, uh, as a practitioner, when you're confronted with something and you don't know what to tell people. And sometimes what you do then is you go to um, a position of saying things that you think are true that, are not, that aren't necessarily true, such as your child will never walk. Um, and there's, there's wonderful stories, uh, an adult with arthrogryposis that I met uh, in, uh, England who was telling me that uh, when he was born, um, his mother didn't get to see him. Uh, and in fact, for the first few days, she didn't get to see him. And then finally she said, I want to see my baby. I want to see my baby. And they're like, well, okay. Uh, so uh, as the mom told the story to her child later on, she was kind of led down the hall with you know doctors and nurses and everybody all around her. And they kind of went to this like a closet, as he called it. And she said to myself, oh, okay, with everybody around, I'm gonna have to brace myself because I can't let them see that whatever I see is gonna worry me because uh, then they'll all you know, freak out and I'll never see my baby again. So when they opened up the door and she said, oh my goodness, you know, <laughs> she thought to herself something along the lines that you can't say on tape here. But, um, and, and that was really, you know, that was, you know, 30 some years ago, but uh, in some places you still hear that we're, um, you know, parents are given this really dire idea of what their child will look like. Now, thank goodness uh, that there are people in AMC support who have just limited, a limitless energy um, and have come up with this, what's called the NICU packet, the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit packet, uh, which has all kinds of great information for parents, for doctors, uh, and their idea is just to blanket this across the nation, get all the pediatric hospitals uh, this information, all the, the labor and delivery units, this information, so that they have a child with arthrogryposis, they know where to direct the family to. Um, and the next step is that we need to uh, get more awareness again to all the pediatric orthopedists out there, uh, all the pediatricians out there. So once they see a child with arthrogryposis, they already have a little idea of what's going on and maybe don't know how to treat the child, but can at least direct them to where they can get more information. Uh, but it, it's always so interesting when you meet families who've never met another child with arthrogryposis. Yesterday we saw a 15-year-old boy uh, from Texas, uh, and that family had never seen another child with arthrogryposis. So, yeah, I can think back again to the first uh, uh, 
AMC support uh, conference I went to, and there was a child who came down from Alaska, uh, and she was 12, and the mother was just weeping, weeping, because she had never seen another child with arthrogryposis, and this was just for her such a wonderful event to be in. So it gets back to, you know, what do I enjoy about my patients? You know, this is fun and it's rewarding and it's exciting. There's um, so much that we can still develop uh, in terms of treatment of children with arthrogryposis um, and so many rewards that we're seeing are the kids that we have treated. So that's really what makes this uh, such an exciting area to be in. Um, and this is a great hospital to work at. I mean, I, I really enjoy the people I work with uh, and uh, you know, the support that they show for us. Um, so there is, you know, there's no day that I wake up and I go, oh, I gotta go to work again. No, it's, it's always very interesting to do. You know, some days are more trying than others. Um, and some clinics go longer than others. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you still got that kiddo that you think, ah, I helped that kid. Look at him. Look what he's doing. Um, and that's just that's a great sense of pride.